Okay, yeah, some people are joining now. Um, okay. Okay, so I think you can see my screen now. Um, okay, so hello everyone, uh, and welcome to uh, this week's uh, Sanus Antenna Design Webinar, where you will be introduced to the process behind uh, role definition, uh, physics, uh, and the results of uh, microchip patch antennas with uh, Sanus, um, all in a brief and uh, understandable manner. Um, by the way, I think someone has uh, forgot their microphone on. I believe it's Mike. Yeah, thank you, Mike. Um, okay, so having been through uh, the geometry and um, sort of the meshing process behind, uh, like the process demonstrated in our um, previous webinar, uh, you should now have a somewhat good understanding of the antenna modeling and um, meshing workflow behind uh, the antennas. Um, and with this walkthrough into the final um, stage, into the final simulation segment, uh, you should be ready to experiment with uh, microstrip patch antenna design and simulation right away. Um, of course, if you'd like to suggest the two topics for future webinars, feel free to write them uh, in the chat. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to uh, feel free to type them out in the chat, and we will also have uh, a dedicated Q and A session uh, at, in the end. Um, so let's uh, just uh, just jump right into it by opening up uh, Senos and um, navigating around the main interface of the Antenna Design platform. Um, so uh, we can see here it's loading the kernel, okay. Um, so let's uh, click on the geometry editor um, and save the case. Let's say for example, um, webinar three. So um, in case you haven't familiarized yourself with FreeCAD before, this is the CAD interface that uh, allows you to model your design however you wish and later on mesh it before sending it to Senos for simulation like we showed last time. Um, now, for this example, let's begin by loading a very simple patch antenna from the component library. So let's click here on the blue icon and select uh, patch, for example. Okay. Um, so all, all we have to do is uh, load the patch in as an example. And um, of course, now we won't get into um, too much detail on uh, on the geometry and meshing um, like we did last time. Uh, but as you can see, our patch antenna has been uh, implemented into uh, the frequent interface, and we can view the geometry of the antenna in any angle uh, and orientation by moving and rotating around the model, of course. Uh, so we have our objects here. Um, as mentioned in the previous um, webinar, our model is basically finished at this point, and it's time to mesh it. So let's uh, select the objects and click here on the purple icon, and uh, click on Create Mesh. Okay, so we can see our um, our mesh is uh, essentially ready here. You can see the the trace of the and of the patch antenna a little bit, along with the um, the little mesh cells. So um, this is a very quick uh, five minute um, reminder of uh, just how the the whole process works be, be, before um, meshing, like geometry modeling, meshing, and now of course we can. Um, Forward this to Senos and the mesh to Senos. It's loading here. Okay. And it says mesh sent successfully. So we can click OK and uh, load the, the main Senos interface again. We can see here that our model has been passed correctly. And note that it uh, allows us to select the application of our antenna. So um, we can choose between microstrip or PCB, wire, and other types of antenna. So uh, obviously, for our design, uh, it's uh, it's microstrip slash PCB. So let's select this. And now this is important. So it allows us to select the, the roles, assign the roles to the antenna. And this is very important because uh, Senos needs to know, um, like the solver needs to know, um, what each uh, element of our antenna corresponds to. For example, we can uh, look here around. And um, one, one thing we have to fill in, of course, is the substrate. So let's click here. And uh, we can see a few volumes that it has recognized that we have uh, obviously previously defined in um, in FreeCAD. So we can see here, like uh, if you if, we, if you hover around, you can see that um, it becomes uh, like uh, orange. So it allows you to see which one, uh, which object you're actually um, referring to when you select this. So let's pick this, and you can see it turned blue. Obviously, the substrate is selected here, and click Assign Substrate. So um, now we need to select uh, the patch now. It asks us for the patch. So 
you can see that on the volumes, there's pretty much nothing other than the substrate. Um, so we go on the other tab where we have faces here. And uh, of course, we have a lot of faces here, um, which makes sense because our model has uh, you know, many, many edges, many faces. So we can, instead of um, going through each one of these faces one by one to see um, which one it is, obviously, it's probably phase nine. Um, we can also um, uh, we can also select the patch uh, element in, in the center. So let's just click on this, and you can see it's selected now. Again, we can uh, preview whether it has been actually selected, or whether it's actually the correct face. Um, and yeah, we can also zoom here, zoom around here. And uh, obviously, it's blue, so that means it's been selected. So assign patch, and uh, now substrate and patch are finished. We have uh, told Senos, told the software um, or the solver what these uh, objects correspond to, and now we can select the ground plane. Uh, again, obviously, we need to select the face at the back. This is uh, how most patch antennas radiate the ground uh, ground plane at the bottom. Um, again, you know, if, if we hover around, you can see that uh, the color changes. So assign ground. And then finally, uh, we can uh, give the solver, um, let, let the solver know what the port is. So it's obviously um, this part over here. We can zoom in and click it. So uh, this has also been selected. Uh, again, we did not have to go one by one. But if you're not sure, you can just do this to make sure there is no um, similar sort of looking face or something. So we have selected this face. And uh, just like that, um, we can assign port. And just like that, uh, we're pretty much finished with the role definitions. So obviously, um, this took a couple of minutes to, to show you thoroughly how the whole process goes. But in general, it doesn't take more than a minute for most, uh, for most antennas. So um, now that we have defined, um, now that we have uh, essentially told Senos what our, um, what our sort of elements in the antenna is, what our phases are, uh, we can uh, proceed to the physics now that we've, we're done with the roles. So let's click on physics, go to physics. And uh, it now asks us for the excitation parameters. So for example, let's say I want to simulate um, a, single, a single frequency, like uh, 2.4 gigahertz, for example. Uh, obviously, this antenna may not be uh, for this precise frequency, may be very close. Um, but in any case, um, the process is obviously the same. Um, so we, we select a single frequency, for example. You can also select multiple frequencies if you want. We can select now the substrate. So this allows you to send us, allows you very easily to very easily select the substrate uh, of, your, of, of interest. For example, we have. Um, we have FR4, we have a lot of Rogers here. Arrow is Rogers, um, very sort of popular um, subsets that you can use in uh, antenna zones. For example, RT Duroid 5880 with a good, um, yeah. If we click on it, by the way, you can see the magnetic permeability, the electric constant, and the electric loss tangent. So you can very easily look from this uh, material library. And you don't have to go to, um, for example, some data sheet to look for um, the exact values necessarily. And uh, Senos also lets you know that um, this is for f for frequency of 10 gigahertz. This, these parameters. So um, we can also uh, define our own our own materials if we want. We can create new. We can copy this um, Rogers material if, if we want. Um, but let's just go with FR4 as a very simple example uh, and click Apply. So our antenna uses now FR4, as you can see here, it's been selected. So uh, we can uh, assume that this is a very simple antenna for testing purposes, um, where one could fabricate it uh, at a very inexpensive cost. So um, free space, we don't have to touch anything uh, usually. and. Uh, Boundaries, uh, again, we can uh, adjust parameters if we want, for example, the the impedance that we uh, expect, like 50 ohm, for example. Uh, maybe if you're designing, um, for example, it, an, an antenna for uh, TV communication, for, for television, broadcast television, digital television, um, a home antenna, for example, 
you know, you can maybe set this to 73 ohms, for example, or 75 ohms. Um, but for this example, uh, patch antennas are usually tuned for, for that. This is the impedance they expect. So let's just leave it to 50 ohm and click uh, run. So uh, now what Sinus is doing is essentially um, giving the mesh, giving the whole model to the solver behind the scenes. And what it is currently doing is computing the whole, um, it's essentially solving uh, the problem. It's basically trying to simulate the antenna and see what results we get, of course. Um, now we can also zoom here, zoom in here if we want to see it, the exact uh, things it's doing. And it's telling us it's calculating the case. We can go back uh, if we want. Um, and now it's currently post processing the results. So most of the simulation has finished at this point since we only um, gave a single frequency point. So there's not a whole lot to simulate. Um, and uh, yeah, now it's, it's starting, yeah. So now uh, we will uh, expect to see Paraview. There we go. Uh, so Paraview is loading up with uh, our results, of course. So there we go. We have uh, a radiation pattern, which might not look super familiar for, for Apache and then, of course. Uh, given the parameters are a little bit uh, off. And uh, we also have the electric field here on the right. So if we rotate around uh, one one side, we can also see the orientation changes on the other side as well. So it's very easy to sort of visualize what you're actually looking at and compare sort of sort of, um, sort of the electric field with the radiation pattern, the 3D uh, pattern. And we can see here at the bottom um, the directivity. So um, this is the 3D view. We can also look at the radiation patterns in uh, in 2D view, so we can sort of see um, in polar plots as well as uh, sort of Cartesian coordinate systems, and see how exactly our antenna um, radiates, in which directions, what with what directivity, and so on. You can see here the y-axis uh, demonstrates the directivity. Um, for a patch antenna, you would usually expect around 5 uh, dB, uh, of course. And last but not least, we have the S11 and other charts, which essentially lets us know what the reflection coefficient is at uh, the frequency we input it. So 2.4 gigahertz, we get about uh, minus 4 dB, uh, which is obviously not uh, superb. Uh, you would want to go back and adjust a little bit the parameters. And we can also see the VSR plot, which is uh, very similar to S11, in case you're not uh, familiar. Uh, but some people prefer that, so we give them the option to, to look at that. And um, of course, we have the impedance, resistance, and reactance, which might be a very important plot for, for many engineers, where we can see the complex uh, impedance. So we can see the resistance, the reactance, which is the imaginary part of the impedance, and, uh, and the impedance, of course, itself, um, which uh, we have very low uh, reactance here. And uh, also low resistance, it's far below 50 ohms. And hence, the S11 is uh, not super low. And we have the accepted power, uh, of course. So uh, we've got these four plots. We can go back to the radiation pattern, and we can go to the 3D view and uh, rotate around. So this is, these are the basics of, um, so these are the basics of the, uh, of the Paraview visualization tool, where you can uh, look around, uh, rotate around the, the antenna. Um, and to give you another example, because I uh, mentioned earlier that I uh, would show you the multiple frequency, uh, like uh, multiple frequency excitation. So let's, uh, oh, yeah, let's open up SEMS again. And um, instead, of, instead of going with the geometry, let's just go with uh, a template as an example. So um, let's select template. And here we can uh, adjust the parameters if we want a little bit, but uh, it's fine for now. So let's just uh, click go to physics. And here we see uh, multiple frequencies. So we can select single, multiple. Um, let's just go with, uh, with this example. Let's leave this to 2.3 gigahertz to 2.4 gigahertz with a step of 50 megahertz. So um, this should allow us to now see uh, more values in the in the plots, more um, more frequency points, for example, and we can select again the substrate. Let's just leave this to to this to this material, um, and yeah, we'll just leave this as is and click uh, click on run. 
So uh, now it is preparing the geometry, um, just like before. So it's uh, meshing everything uh, and computing uh, computing the sort of um, result results. Well, the results are computed in the very end. So if uh, I zoom in here and want to look at what exactly Senna is doing in the background, I can see that it at, that at um, two fifty. Uh, PM, uh, it is setting a frequency of uh, 2.3 gigahertz. Uh, one minute later, it is setting a frequency to uh, 2.35 gigahertz and so on. Uh, obviously, if you have a very uh, wide um, wide excitation, like many frequencies, with a perhaps small frequency set, you should see many of these uh, setting frequency um, parameters. And finally, it is now post-processing the results. So we should expect um, should expect Paraview to, to open up any second now with, uh, with our results, just like before with the geometry uh, editor, where we uh, imported uh, a design from FreeCAD, which doesn't have a, to be a patch antenna, by the way. It can be any type of antenna, like uh, Yagi antenna, dipole antenna, um, you know, uh, any type of antenna, really. It doesn't, it's not restricted that much. So um, let's give it a second to load up the, um, the PowerView uh, tool. Sometimes this can take a little bit of time um, if you have too many frequency points or if your design is perhaps complex or complicated and needs to compute certain things, which can, can obviously take some time. But now it's finished. so. Uh, Paragi should uh, open up now. There we go. And you can see again the, um, the, the, the radiation pattern, the 3D plot, as well as the electric field. So we can click around here and uh, rotate. There we go. Again, here we have the uh, electric field. We can see the flow near the inset, near the feed. And uh, at the bottom, we have, of course, very little uh, radiation. So the antenna is not that sensitive uh, on the back, of course. Of course, this is uh, wanted. This is obviously normal for, for patch antennas. Um, and um, now that we've uh, shown the 3D plots again, again, we can go to the 2D plots, which, uh, of course, make more sense this time because the parameters are optimized for 2.4 gigahertz. And look on the S11 again, and VSR uh, impedance, uh, and so on. So uh, we can see this time that at 2.4 gigahertz, the antenna is actually resonating. Um, it's below minus 10 dB, which is, uh, is is good. Perhaps if we go further to 2.45 or 2.5 gigahertz, we might see an even even lower um, reflection. So uh, again, VSR is below uh, two here, just below two units and uh, impedance is now at 2.4 gigahertz we can see it's uh, somewhat uh, closer to um, 250 ohms and the uh, reactance is uh, about 15 20 ohms um, so yeah the, the, the this this plot essentially tells us that our antenna is indeed uh, well matched to 50 ohms 50 plus uh, yeah 50 ohms essentially and uh, again, we have the accepted power. Um, so uh, that's about it with the 3D, with the, the S11 and uh, 3D view. And um, actually, that's about it for, for PowerView and uh, roles, physics, and results visualization. Um, so with that, uh, I'd like you, I'd like to thank you all for um, attending this webinar uh, on um, on patch roles, uh, physics, and uh, results visualization. And I uh, definitely hope to see you um, all in the next ones. Uh, which would likely involve um, further in-depth simulation properties, uh, like uh, like um, maybe similar designs for um, for dipole antennas or wire antennas. Um, but uh, of course, if you've got uh, any questions, uh, feel free to ask. And uh, if there are any topics you'd like to suggest for future uh, meetings, uh, feel free to propose uh, freely. Okay, so let me look in the chat here. Okay, Mike is uh, enjoying enjoying Frigate. So um, 
it's uh, again i'm not sure what you're referring to exactly but uh you can uh, you can essentially mesh the the model through freecad um this is something that senos allows you to do and then uh pass it on to uh onto the senos uh, interface um for, for uh for proceeding with your uh, with your simulation as usual so it's uh, quite uh quite easy to go from freecad to um to to senos essentially um can I can I ask another question? Yeah, yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so, do you have to add a plugin into your FreeCAD? Because I noticed in your FreeCAD, it says go to CNOS. So then, do you have to install a plugin in FreeCAD to bring it from FreeCAD to CNOS? Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. So uh, when you install CNOS, it actually asks you to um, select the the third party. So FreeCAD. Um, Part of you and get DP for, for physics. Uh, so when you um, when you go through the process, even if you have never installed uh, FreeCAD before, uh, Senos takes care of, takes care of all of this um, automatically. So uh, uh, of course, uh, send to Senos the send to Senos button is not uh, integrated in um, FreeCAD uh, by itself, but uh, with Senos um, you can you you've got this button essentially. You've got this option. Um, okay, thank you. And and there was also a question on uh, is there a, a thickness to phase nine? I, be, I, I believe phase nine is. Uh, is well, you the were doing element. the first the first patch, and you selected the you selected the face. Mm -hmm. So 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 okay, because like again, I'm not really good of antennas, and I'm learning. So please bear with me. Um, but when you have a patch antenna. Typically, it's a circuit board. So a circuit board, you know, theoretically. And so there's a copper layer, a thickness to the copper layer. You have your insulation layer, and then you have your ground plane. So then it, the thickness, so I guess you went through it, but when you selected the, the face for your patch, I guess then later on you would select the thickness or that material, right? Is that what yeah, you've so done? So the face, um, yeah, indeed the face is a 2D surface, but obviously in, in reality, um, in, in PCBs, you obviously have a very, very uh, small thickness for, for the trace, it's usually around 35 micrometers. Um, you can also uh, do this in, in Senos, of course. You can, uh, instead of faces, you can actually um, build the, the copper as a 3D sort of narrow 3D trace. Um, so you can also define, uh, define this. Um, by default, uh, the material of the of the copper of the of the um, of the patch of the conductor is is uh, by default PEC. It's perfect electrical conductor. So um, this is sort of to to estimate the to, to run basic sort of calculations. Um, but you can of course select the different material if if needed. Uh, for example, in the material library, we've also got um, I'm not sure if you know it's beyond uh, the substrates beyond the the electrics, we've also got um, copper, uh, aluminum, and things like that. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Thank you. Um, and then I guess the next question is, what was your modeling software that you're using? Is it home built, or is it like an NEC style um, antenna modeling software? Um, Do you understand the question? So, um, uh, what I understand is, um, are, are you referring to FreeCAD? No. So when you when you say to your CNOS software to go and simulate the antenna, is is there another underlying software, or is that CNOS your physics engine? Uh, so I, uh, as far as I'm aware, it should be JDP alone. So we've uh, programmed this to take the mesh and then compute everything and then spit out the results in, into PowerView. Um, okay, so it's not a. It's. Are you familiar with NEC, the uh, numeric? Okay, so it's. Yeah, it's I don't your think it's. I don't think it's NEC. Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure it's not NEC. It uses GetDP for for the physics. Sorry, it uses what? It, it uses GetDP. Get uh, it, it's, it's it's one of the third parties that you get when you download Senos actually. Oh, okay, so it's a third party. Okay. Yeah. And there's no Linux version, obviously. Um, not yet, but we are actually looking to um, to push 
something else for Linux uh, soon. Uh, there's obviously a lot of features that we're trying to implement, so there's a lot of um, sort of things we're looking to add. Uh, but yeah, uh, we definitely do look forward to getting um, a Linux version out. That would be pretty cool for, for, okay. for more users. Um, now, this may be a loaded question, final question. Um, mm -hmm. I could talk all day. <laughs> um, <laughs> you have, are you planning to do a phased array type of system? Uh, do you have that already? And if you could do a quick demo. Um, if, I don't have, if like, have, uh, if you have time. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, I don't have, like, a phased array um, design at hand, but uh, you can, ab you absolutely can uh, design a phased array antenna in Senos. I believe we've got an example on our website um, where on the very front page where you can see sort of two, two patch elements that um, that sort of show the, the, the radiation pattern, I think. Um, so, yeah, you absolutely can. Um, Obviously, uh, building one uh, takes a little bit of time to sort of uh, add the traces together, um, take care of the matching and all this stuff. Um, but yeah, Senos is definitely built uh, also for that. Yeah, absolutely. OK, so because the matching is the key for phased array. That's what I understand. Um, yeah. So are you able to, OK, now this, again, may be a loaded question. Um, wh when you. Uh, put your port or put your signal into the port, are you able to, put, let's say, for example, you have two patches, and on one port of your simulation, add the phase of it. So you can, let's say, put a phase of 30 degree. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 I, I see. Um, so, OK, I was um, referring to a slightly different configuration. So um, in FreeCAD, you can actually just uh, build the two patch antennas and then connect the traces like uh, in analog. So um, basically connect the trace together into one port um, and then excite it like this. Now, to change the phase, you can obviously um, add a little bit of length in one uh, sort of, uh, in like uh, one uh, one side, like b before yeah. one element. In yeah. Phase of line. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for, for two ports, I don't think we can. It's as convenient yet, yet, because this is also something we're looking to. Among many other features, this is something that we're looking to add in order to um, make it even easier, sort of um, simulate such antennas. Yes, because you can you can do it on hardware where you lay out your traces. Yeah, with phase shifters. Yeah, your your, your phase delay, but but you can also. From my understanding, limited understanding, but in software, if you're you, you're you're putting an impedance match, or you're you can put a phase delay with the stimu sim stimulation within the software. So you can say, oh, stim stimulate this port with this, and then you can say, okay, stimulate this port with this with the phase delay to it. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, exactly, so, exactly. Okay, yeah, this, yeah, this okay, is well, uh, this is great. <laughs> go on. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna, is... Sorry, I was just going to comment. Is that that was the model that I set up? Is actually got three feeds, coaxial feeds that are um, 120 degrees phase shifted to feed the patch, and that gives basically a very similar pattern to a single feed with an offset, which is what I expect. Um, which right. means the the simulation was doing exactly what you'd expect it to do. The the three feeds were giving this much the same result as the single feed um, with an offset. So, yeah, it, it seems to work. I, I wasn't sure, but I did three three ports with a 120 degrees offset feed, and, and that worked. I, I tested it first with a single feed, though. Um, so I think you could do a phased array doing a similar thing. I don't know if it gets more complicated if you start adding lots of ports, though. I mean, it might. Oh, yeah. yes, absolutely. So are you doing it for three-phase power? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just convenient. Maybe you're, I don't know, building a three-phase power detector. <laughs> so, um, uh, okay, well, thank you for answering my questions. But I, I do have a general physics question, if that's okay. Again, this is just for me. Uh, if you guys have to go. Um, no, no, uh, go, go ahead. If I can answer it, of course. <laughs> so, so I'm looking, I'm a big ham enthusiast, so I'm looking to do a uh, phased array, well, not, well, eventually, let me get to patch antennas first. Um, 
but I want it for a fairly low frequency um, a, as far as patch antennas go. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm looking at, are you familiar with the ham radio? And yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you know there's 2 meter, 440, uh, 1.2 gig. So I'm, I'm looking to do a patch antenna, a patch antenna to install on my roof at for, for 2 meters, so 144 megahertz. So I've done some quick back of the envelope calculations and basically I, I can get a sheet of metal that is uh, one meter by one meter and then and then uh, and then make your ground plane from there and then you know there's there's a lot of like this is again like I said I, I'm just playing <laughs> yeah <laughs> but does it seem reasonable that so I you can simulate that in CIOS, CNOS then mm -hmm. obviously and then how the configuration and, and the impedance matching circuit will be um, and then on top of that, I would be putting the 440 patch antenna that's a smaller size on top of the the main feed. Again, this is all with um, standoffs, insulation, and blah, blah, blah. I, mm -hmm. Is that all viable? Again, this is a physics question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, OK. So um, okay. I guess you want me to answer whether it makes sense like uh, as, as, a, as an antenna design. Um, so. Okay, so in general, we don't usually create um, micro strip patch antennas that large for this low frequency because obviously it gets large. Um, but of course, it is feasible theoretically. Um, it's not like physics uh, cares whether you you have a space to create a large um, sur surface of, of conductors. Um, now you can put you can sort of place. Um, like there are double stacked patch antenna designs. We're actually looking to implement uh, a template for this in Senos uh, soon. Um, we, so we've also tested the double stacked patch antennas and it works. Um, so you probably can do this. Um, of course, the question is whether um, you know the dimensions will be correct. So you, you would probably have to simulate this first to see um, whether it actually works, whether it resonates, or maybe some dimensions are off, or maybe the the spacing between the four, 400 megahertz and the two meter uh, band antenna, uh, whether they have to be closer or further apart for them to all work properly. Um, but the software should take that into account, of course, right? So that's, the, that's, that's what I'm looking to do with mm -hmm. the software. Yeah, so, so mm -hmm. oh yeah, so, so simulation software in general um, that solve electromagnetic problems for, for antennas, uh, they all work like this. So you give it the model, you mesh it, and then you pass it to um, to like the you pass it to the solver to the physics. Um, and what the physics does is basically solve maybe Maxwell's equations and so on, and give you the results. So um, what it doesn't do, or what it doesn't inherently do, is um, give you the exact dimensions for your application, um, because obviously it doesn't. Uh, it's not like uh, a super smart brain that knows everything about antenna theory. This is well, so, so so you don't have constraints into your into your modeling. So you can't you can't optimize a design, for example. Okay. Do you so, have constraints so that you can optimize a design? So do you understand what I'm saying? If we have optimization algorithms. Sorry. If we have got parameterization or optimization algorithms. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Param yes. So um, yeah, this is also one of the key features that are coming soon in the, ah, okay. in the upcoming probably months. Um, we will start with parameterization, so the user can very quickly uh, adjust the parameter and see what happens. Okay. And also after this, we will also add um, optimization, so trust region framework, right. the, uh, genetic algorithms, um, uh, you know things like that. Um, and this should allow the user to very quickly or um, like with a very sophisticated tool behind him to optimize the, their antenna design for, for, for their application. For example, um, you can then, you, you will then be able to go to Senos, um, pick the width, pick the length of uh, each antenna, pick the distance between the antennas, and tell Senos, hey, I want you to, based on these parameters, try to changing them around uh, until I get, for example, a VSR of uh, under two, for example, that frequency. Right, okay. So this is something that we are uh, looking to add to, to, to implement. 
uh, as, as a key feature, actually. Okay, okay, okay. Um, yeah, no, this is great. Thank you for your time, and, and thank you for the software. And thank you for using FreeCAD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very convenient. <laughs> now, just quickly, is ParaView, is that based off of FreeCAD, or is that your own? Uh, so, no, it's actually another third party. <laughs> so, th these are the uh, three third parties. So, it's okay. uh, only FreeCAD, JDP, and ParaView. That, that's it. Okay, we might, okay. we might um, make less use of FreeCAD in the future if we like um, pass the results to the to to Senna, so it feels like a one seamless interface. Um, yeah, but yeah, the, because the if you have uh, if you have modeling of let's say you're making I don't know arguments sake a cell phone, and you have the rest of your model of the cell phone, you understand where the plastic and other chips and everything else. Yeah, yeah. A, a tenant pattern might be obstructed or changed because of that, and then you could select a whole area and saying this is my model. What would the antenna pattern be with this interferences? Do you understand what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Makes sense. And then, and then your mesh. You then you select all that, and then again, um, it depends on the materials that's there. You select a larger mesh, and then you'd have to go in and select which materials is what on the mesh and then when you run it through the solver then you'll get more of a realistic what the pattern will look like with the with the other um components yeah yeah the other components there that's the word i was looking for in in the general area yeah 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 yeah, so exactly. yeah thank you very much for your time and and and, and good job good work <laughs> my pleasure thank you mike for for your question and uh, your interest Yes, I like to make it engaging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought pleasure. Yeah, good job. Keep, keep working. <laughs> Thanks. All right, Mike. Thanks a lot. Bye. Take care, buddy.